I want to talk today specifically to families. Do you have kids home from school during the quarantine? Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh. I know that your house probably feels crazy right now, and small children, of course, need so much monitoring. On top of that, there's a lot of anxiety. Many families have news on in the background that kids are picking up on. Many adults are feeling so much stress, depression, anxiety themselves, worries about money, worries about health. And so kids are picking up on this. Today, I'd like to give you a few tips on what you can do if you have children in your home during quarantine. To pull you off the guilt train, parents, about your kids not getting enough stimulation or not getting enough social contact, I want to remind you that for a small child, their home is their parent's body. So how exciting that they actually have you home with them. And don't lose sight of the fact that this is a time that you will look back on and even have some feelings of, huh, remember the days when we were all together all the time? And it may be the last time, especially if you have older children, that all of you will be together for any extended period of time. So don't forget to cherish this as well. However, if you have small children who may be exhibiting symptoms of depression or anxiety, things to watch for might be bedwetting, nightmares, uh, sleep habits disrupted, eating schedules weird, a lot of just whiny and cranky for no reason. These are signs that a child is exhibiting a mental health problem. And I want to say that the first thing you can do to help your child is to internally organize yourself. Remember, small children are sponges and they just soak up whatever the adults around them are feeling. And they pick up clues. They don't just pay attention to the, your words. They pay attention to your body language, to your tone of voice. They're listening carefully to what you say to other adults. They're trying every way possible to scrounge up information and make sense of it in their tiny little minds. So the first tip I can give you is to please, please take care of yourself first. If you are suffering from depression or anxiety, reach out. I'm going to have a whole nother discussion on things that you can do, some self-help treatments for you. But in the meantime, you can reach out to many, many online therapists Many of them are giving free therapy, in fact, online during this time to get some good coping strategies for yourself. Secondly, tell your child that this is not their fault. And when you seem to get a little angry quicker, it's not because of anything they've done. It's because you're feeling stress. There's nothing wrong with expressing open emotions and talking about things. You know, it's when things get suppressed that kids run into difficulties because they're trying to figure out the words aren't matching the actions with mom. What's going on? So it's really important that you work on calming yourself, whether you're using mindful meditation, whether you're exercising or using other relaxation techniques. That's the best way to help your child is to help yourself first. Remember that favorite saying of mine, you have to put your own oxygen mask on first before you can help anybody else. But secondly, you also have a job, a job as a parent to keep some structure and some sense of normalcy in your kids' lives. Remember, kids thrive on structure. They need to know what's coming next. Imagine you were a tiny little body living in a land of giants and they were throwing you around or telling you this is happening now or this is happening tomorrow and you can't figure it all out. And plus you don't have a good sense of time. So I think what you need to do is sit down with your kids and have them participate in making a structured schedule and make a schedule for the whole week, make it visual, have them decorate it, color it, put it on the fridge so that they know when sleep time is, when food time is, when study time is, when break time is, when movie watching time is, when family watching time is. And you'll be amazed that they will have some really great advice for creating this structure. Now, once you have this structure, don't be a drill sergeant about it. Show some flexibility. You know, I say there are three kinds of parents in the world and all three of them live inside each of us, by the way, at different times. There is the brick wall parent that says it's my way or the highway and don't ask me why, just do it. And then there is the jellyfish parent who asks a question every time they give a command. Should we do this? Can we do this? Okay. And then there's the flexible backbone parent. 
the one who has logical consequences, who doesn't practice spanking or corporal punishment, who talks with the child and negotiates and understands and respects them, but still has firm, clear boundaries with no anger attached to them. Don't we all wish we were always the flexible backbone parent? We have our moments, don't we? But I think all three kinds of parents live inside of each parent and they come out at different times. So do your best to be the flexible backbone parent as much as possible. I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh. Thanks for joining me on this edition of the Dr. Wendy Walsh Show. I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh. Mating Matters is the place to understand why we do what we do. It's the secret to winning the mating game. It's all explained using evolutionary psychology in my podcast, Mating Matters. Listen and follow Mating Matters on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Mating Matters.